So let's talk about an ill president. I mean, we obviously were just hearing that he's um, showing minor symptoms, but can you tell tell me what like what would happen? Like, what would make him have to give a transfer of power? And what's the procedure? What would be the first step? I, I think he probably has advisors who would make that decision if he's incapacitated. Um, I think this has happened before. Um, when President Reagan, for example, was shot, um, I think uh, the uh, next the uh, uh, kind of a committee around the president uh, made the decision uh, of what to do uh, moving forward. Who would be in charge um, while uh, uh, they worked on uh, President Reagan um, in, in the 1980s? I can't remember exactly the date. Um, so I think there is a, 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 a plan for what happens if he be, if the president becomes incapacitated or incapable of performing his duties. Um, uh, there's a there's a group of people around the White House who will, who make those decisions. If he becomes so incapacitated uh, that he cannot make that he can't perform his duties either in the short term and the, or in the long term, um, then uh, they may uh, um, uh, there's a plan of succession in place and and they may uh, um, uh, put Mike uh, put uh, the vice president in, uh, in as president. Um, you know, swear him in, um, which which has been which has happened before. And presidents who have been assassinated, um, uh, the vice president has been sworn in. I don't think it happened until after those presidents died. Um, but uh, uh, but certainly, I, I think uh, I, I, don't, I don't think we can jump to those kinds of conclusions. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, there it's is pretty, a it's there is a there is a plan. Uh, I'm sure the president's office and, and, and the federal government has a plan for uh, what happens if the president becomes incapacitated. There's a chain of command um, who who does what and who steps into um, uh, to fill the president's shoes while the president is incapacitated so, or, or unable to fulfill his duties. I should say that. So. And when was the last time this happened with uh, President Reagan? President Reagan, I think, is in my memory, I think, or to me, I think President Reagan was the last time uh, somebody really had to step in. Um, and I, I think it was Ed Meese who quite famously or infamously said, I'm in charge. Um, right. Uh, um, but uh, Reagan recovered um, and uh, resumed his presidential duties uh, soon. Uh, pretty, pretty fast, actually. Um, so. Uh, I, I don't think in that regard, uh, um, the country will not remain leaderless, I think, if people are worried about that. It's, um, so. How will something, I don't know if you, um, how would something like this look to our adversaries? I mean, they know we have a plan in place, but, but what are your thoughts about that? An incapacitated I president. Um, I think some people might try, I think some of the country's adversaries may try to take advantage of that. Um, uh, I, I think they might, but I, 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 I don't think that there's any way to tell for sure. Um, I think that they understand that there is a, 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 a chain of command in place. Um, so I think uh, they would know that if the president isn't capable or able to make decisions regarding the country's defense, um, that somebody will be in that office to make those decisions. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily think it opens the country up to, to, uh, uh, to that kind of act. It, it doesn't open it up to uh, foreign powers kind of using the app. It, it's, it's not an opportunity for foreign powers to, to kind of take advantage of the United States per se. Well, I, um, it seems like we have a pretty strong willed president. It, if he does not relinquish powers due to his illness, let's say he's he's pretty bad, and he's just said, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pass the baton to Vice President Pence. It, there is there is something in place where somebody, a committee, like you said, will say, you know what, Mr. President, this is the point where you have to. I mean, if he's still, you know, uh, alert and conscious, but there is a there is a, a a protocol, so to speak, where somebody will say, no, you have to relinquish power now, or we're just doing well, it right. If the president becomes uh, uh, some people who get coronavirus uh, 
get put on a, ventil on a ventilator and they are unconscious. Um, in that case, somebody would act as the president of the United States, or they would step in to fill that role. Um, and it would probably be Vice President Pence. I'm sure, I mean, that's who it would be, right? Um, but uh, uh, so um, in that regard, the president wouldn't necessarily have a say in the matter because he would be uh, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, um, unconscious. Um, so I don't think anybody's really going to question that. He just, uh, and that happens, I think, when presidents have had surgery, like with uh, uh, Reagan, um, or, or, or other things, you know, been otherwise incapacitated. Um, somebody steps in to fill that void. Um, All right. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about this situation or, you know, the potential of what could happen down the road? I mean, God forbid, you know, the president is fine and he has a minor case, but is there anything else that for people, our viewers that are wondering, you know, what happens? Is there anything that you'd like to, to share with us? I, I think that a lot of viewers are going to ask questions about or be, be concerned about what happens to a candidate during an election uh, process. Um, uh, this, uh, if, if, if uh, President Trump is unable to continue on as the candidate of the Republican Party, um, then the before the election, the, um, the both parties actually, if a candidate withdraws or dies during the during the uh, uh, election cycle, both parties have a process by which they can appoint uh, or select a new candidate. Um, things get a little trickier if the if the candidate either withdraws or dies uh, sometime between the popular election and the electoral college election. Uh, popular election in the United States this year is. Um, November 3rd, and then the Electoral College meets on December 14th. Um, if something happens then, uh, then the party could select a new uh, candidate, um, even if that candidate, uh, if, say, um, uh, a candidate A wins the election, the popular vote, and then dies before the Electoral College casts the ballot, um, the party can select a new candidate uh, for president, and then the Electoral College will vote on that ticket, uh, or on that president and vice president, uh, the election does not go back to the people in that regard. Um, uh, if a candidate withdraws or dies after the electoral college meets, um, then uh, Congress can either count the electoral college votes on January 6th. Um, if they count the votes and verify them or validate them, uh, as this as is the language, um, then a normal succession would uh, apply. So if president, if the candidate A is for president uh, and that person dies before the electoral college vote is validated in in January by the con by Congress, then Congress can say um, uh, we're going to validate this election, and then whoever is vice president would step into the presidential slot, um, and then that person would select a new vice president. Um, as, and we've seen that a couple times before. Um, uh, things get a little trickier if the um, uh, con if Congress decides that they don't want to necessarily validate that vote, the Electoral College vote or the popular vote. Um, if uh, um, and and here we're we getting we're getting into some really murky ground because the, there's really not been a, an instance where this has happened. Um, uh, 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 then, the, then the election goes uh, into the house, into the, into Congress. Uh, basically, uh, the top three vote getters go uh, into Congress, and Congress, uh, House of Representatives, selects a, a president. Essentially, um, uh, I, I've, I've talked about this in the last couple of days, uh, or last. 24 hours, I guess, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, there has been a there has been a court case about that where this has kind of become an issue uh, um, that came up in Washington State in 2020. Um, Chief, uh, I'm sorry, Justice uh, Kagan wrote about this a little bit and said that electoral college voters should be able to choose their preferred candidate if a candidate dies during the election, uh, or I'm sorry, dies after the election date. Um, some states give their electoral college candidates that ability. Some states don't. Um, but it varies from state to state. There's no federal law that says electoral college candidates have to cast their vote one way or the other. Uh, that is left up to the states. Um, but I think uh, um, what a lot of people should know is that there really isn't, uh, there is a process in place 
um, for almost every scenario, although the processes get murkier and murkier. Um, some of the things have happened before. A candidate for president has died uh, between uh, the popular vote and the electoral college vote, uh, Horace Greeley. Um, and uh, uh, um, the vote, uh, some, of, some of the electoral college members voted for him even after he died. Um, and uh, uh, Congress invalidated those votes um, and validated the election in favor of, uh, or validated the electoral college votes in favor of Ulysses S. Grant, who won the election in 1872. So these kinds of things have happened before. Uh, some of these things have happened before. Um, so I'm not overly, uh, uh, there is a process in place for this. Um, uh, uh, so I think that viewers may be a little worried about what's gonna happen. Um, uh, they may not love what happens, um, <laughs> but there is a process for what happens.